Thanks for hopping on, Victor. I appreciate you here. Um, why don't we start off with, can you just tell us like a little bit about your background, like your name, where you're from, what you do, all that kind of good stuff. You know, married, you got kids, what, what have you. Yeah, yeah. So um, my name is Victor. Um, I am married and I have two little boys, two, two kids, um, a three-year-old and a four-year-old. Actually, my older one, his birthday's on um, next Saturday, so he's going to be turning five. Um, but, yeah, so I'm from uh, Maryland, Connecticut, which is a little town in, in Connecticut. Um, but I live in El Paso, Texas, and I was brought here through the military because I was in the military. Um, and then I ended up um, getting out. And once I got out, I ended up relocated back over here in El Paso. So that's where I'm at now. Um, and I own a dog training company and, you know, that's kind of where, how everything started, which, uh, which led me into, you know, opening up my ATM, you know, my ATM business just for another, uh, stream of income. So yeah, that's pretty much where I started and where I'm from and the beginning of everything. Nice, nice. So what got you interested in opening up or starting up an ATM business? So what? I know you said another stream of income. Was that the only thing? Um, yeah, kind of. I mean, the way it started, I met a, I met a buddy in, um, in Germany when I was stationed out there, and he actually had, like, I think he had, like, one ATM. And um, he told me about it, that he, he did that. And, you know, I thought it was a cool idea. That's the first time I ever really heard of it. And then um, I looked into it a little bit more. And at the time, I wasn't, you know, I didn't have money to just kind of get into it. So, um I continued to save and then, you know, I got out, opened up my business and then, you know, money was coming in a little bit, a lot better than it was in the military. You don't get paid much in the military. So, um, yeah, I ended up just investing into the, the program, your program. And, um, that's kind of how it started. So, yeah. Right. Very cool. Very cool. But by the way, thank you for your service. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you. <laughs> well, I appreciate you. <laughs> um, so before the ATM business and, you know, outside of the dog training stuff, have you tried anything else, like any other way to invest your money or anything like that? Um, not really. I saved a lot. Okay. I try to, you know, I put my foot into a little bit of stocks and things like that, but nothing like, nothing major. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so no, I never really got into real estate. I'm going to eventually, but I haven't yet. Um, but now this is actually like my first real, besides my knowledge, you know, and my brain, I invest a lot into my brain. Mm -hmm. That's why I purchased your course, right? Um, I, I buy, you know, courses. I bought courses before and, and invest a lot of money like in education. But other than that, no, nah, no, no, nothing that actually kind of like took me into the step of passive income and, and again, a, another stream of income. Okay. All right. So what made you decide that hey yeah i do want to invest in the course to, to help me start this business so what made me um i mean i think it, it, it kind of goes back to like I, I wanted to do it in the beginning um a few years back like i mentioned when i talked to the to my friend in germany and um i just at the time i just didn't really have the the ability to do it um so i always wanted to because i'm always looking to you know grow as an individual grow um financially or uh, you know become financial financially independent financially free and uh, so that's kind of where it led me you know i mean i'm i'm very you know I, if there's an opportunity for me to you know make myself better or do something better than i usually you know take it you know um and the, the good thing with atm it, it it's not really you don't have a lot of hands on into it you know, I mean, in the beginning, it's a lot of work setting everything up and, and you know, getting everything fired and all cylinders. But once you get your routine now, you, you get the, the big chunks out the way, um, the early stages out the way, then it's everything else after that is pretty, pretty easy. So it doesn't take a lot of time away from me or um, I don't take a lot of time away from myself or my business, my other business, because I'm, you know, I'm full fledged into that. So um, I'm able to kind of do this, just fill out some eight, fill up eight tens and then, you know, that's it real quick. Um, so it's, it's cool. Awesome. Cool. So what was your biggest concern with becoming a student of mine? Um, when it comes to that, cause this isn't my first time, you know, buying 
courses and, and spending investments um, into education. So my biggest concern is just, you know, that value. Like, what, what am I going to get out of it? Am I going to get what I'm looking for out of it? You really don't even know that until um, until you kind of <clears throat> you kind of get into it. And and even if it did, right, you still have to put a lot of commitment into it and 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 putting things to action. But my biggest concern was just, is it am I gonna get enough out of it as far as like learning? Because I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna put everything into it that I need to. So that wasn't a problem. It was like, am I gonna get what I need? And um, you know, I, and I felt I felt that I would because I watched a lot of your videos before and on YouTube and and things like that, and kind of built that relationship. Um, on my end, I mean, you you ain't know me at the time, but you know, it's, I do the same thing with my business, right? I put a lot of content out just to kind of help people build that relationship and and, and show people that you're trustworthy um, because they like that, you know what I mean? And and that was big for me. Um, it was that everything was just genuine, everything was real, everything was just like nothing crazy. You just talked about things that were important, nothing right. irrelevant, um, like a lot of people out there do. Um, we ain't need no flashy little thing flying across the street, off across the screen, um, with a logo. No, nah, we don't need none of that. So it was just, it was genuine, it was real, um, and the content, right? That that's that's the biggest thing. So, you know, when I watched those videos and I learned what I learned, um, it was just like, well, I'm getting this, you know, for free. You know, what what can I get? You know, if I pay, and um, you know, and I, I'm a big relationship type person, so. Um, I work with a lot of people. I, I got other mentors, just like, you know, like how you mentored me. And um, a lot of it is just building, you know, that rapport, building that relationship. Because I, I think that's the biggest thing. That's the most important thing. So um, it was just that, you know, just that vibe that I, could, I, I got off of just your energy and um, on your channel and just talking to you wow. on the phone. When, when I did sit down and do, you know, I talked to who was it, Brandon? Brandon, yeah. You talked to Brandon, yeah. Yeah, I, got, I remember him. You do remember. <laughs> yeah, so that was cool that, you know, <clears throat> I talked to Brent and I was like, hey, Brent, let me get on the phone with Kerry. You know, he, he made it happen. So um, that was kind of, you know, that, that showed a lot. Awesome. And you, what made you, so for people that know this, I have different levels of, of training. I have my entry level training, I have a middle tier training, and then I have a higher end training. So what made you, decide what training you wanted to go with the big program right that's what we talk so yeah <laughs> so um so you went with the big program now what made you what made you decide that yeah i went with the big program the big program that none y'all could get anymore because i got the ACM <laughs> with, so that's not available from what i'm tracking um but the reason why i did go with that one was um just because of the added support and um you know just because like I mean, I think, I think, well, I, I won't even put it out there because that's, that's going to be, that's between me and you and our relationship. Cause we, we, we were close like that, but, um, I, I want, I like the support. I liked it. I like the 24 hour, like, or not 24 hour, but Hey, you know, Hey Carrie, this is what I'm, this is what's going on. What, what do you think? How should I handle this? Um, instead of having to kind of fuck head into the Facebook group and wait, which is great, you know, which I mean, with all the support in there and everybody kind of putting their input in there. A lot of experience so um that's cool too but i just i just wanted the actual kind of you know the actual cushion you know right. actually you know um attachment that kind of the seat belt so like if it's like 12 12 midnight on eastern time and you want to talk to me like we are right now mm -hmm. right you can reach out right because uh yeah. it's not unusual because you're, you're on the west coast i'm on the east coast so it's not unusual for it to be like nine o'clock or ten o'clock your time, twelve o'clock one a.m. my time. You reach out and I still answer. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. And to this that's day, right. we still talk. Like you and I were talking. What was that Saturday? I yeah, we talk every, pretty much almost every week. You know. Yeah, right. One, one way or another. So you you just wanted that more one on one, even though like. You get unlimited one-on-one -on -one access to me. I mean, it's not like 24-7, you know, we're talking. Yeah. But you wanted that security just in case I want to reach out to Carrie, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So how long did it take you to place that very first ATM machine? I should have done a little bit more thinking about this question. But um, to actually place out, I want to say within, within for sure, two weeks. Um, 
Yeah. You played, okay, so, I think you placed four within two weeks. Yeah, it was close. It was something like that. I know there was five within a month. So yeah. um, it was something like that. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. It was it was but, ridiculously crazy. Yeah, but that's the type of person I am. I'm a, I'm gonna go get it. And uh, you went in straight up beast that. mode. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> we can't expect that from everybody, though. So. That is true. I don't expect that from everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you telling me, though, that you're like, I can't, I can't get any more ATMs, Carrie. My wife is going to be mad. And then shortly after, you're like, oh, I got another contract. <laughs> <laughs> remember that? Yeah, yep. And I still, like, beat her up to, I still beat her up to this day. I'm like, hey, look, look. See, look what we're doing now. You know what I mean? Because um, it's always, you know, it's – She's always supportive, um, but she sometimes she kind of gets blurred by the the whoa, that's a lot of money up front, you know. What I mean, right. but we, you know we got to look at the bigger picture. So it, it worked out. It worked out. Awesome. Um, I'm looking. Try, I'm trying to get another one soon, but um, I, I like to get my five like real good spots. So I got mm-hmm. one more that I'm probably gonna um, move. I just moved another one. I talked to you about that a couple of days ago, and that was that was doing good already. Compared to what was just at. Yeah, I mean, awesome. was, yeah. Yeah, I don't think people understand that, you know, part of the ATM business is keeping an, you know, keeping an eye on your machines, and if they're not performing the way you want them to, you pick them up and move them somewhere else. No big deal. Yeah, absolutely. Your, your gems are going to come later. Your gems are going to come in trails. So what I mean by that is, like, my biggest ATM, or the one that makes me the most um, every month, I put that in a in a location, and it didn't it did like six transactions in, in two and a half months. Or, you know, what I mean, it was crazy, something ridiculous. It was it sucked. So that one got moved, and now the one where it went, you know, that's that's our biggest spot. You know what I mean? And it's doing really really good compared to what it was doing before. And then same thing with this, the one I just moved. And uh, you, so you're gonna find places, and you just gotta you gotta give it a shot. You know, you gotta give it a shot, and it's, if it's a miss, you just move it. The next one's gonna, you know, it's gonna be better. Um, so yeah, yeah don't, really, don't feel shy about moving it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my goal is like to get five really good spots, and I, I think right now we got four. I may move one, or another one, but once those five are all in really good spots, then we'll get the sixth one, and then do the same process. You know? And the wifey's on board now, right? Because I remember with that fifth one, I was like, I don't want her to be mad at me. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, she's good now. She's good. She's good. <laughs> cool. <It's> cool. <laughs> so, what would you say was your favorite part of the program, the thing that you found most helpful? Mm, my favorite part. I mean... Or the most helpful part of, of being in the training program? I mean, all of it's really good, you know what I mean? It's... Looking back now... Um, just the legality stuff is important, making sure you're doing everything right. Um, and that was big for me um, because you are you're dealing with money, you're dealing with, you know, something that's out of the ordinary. It's not normal what we do. So the legality stuff was important for me. The paperwork, everything, how you have the vendors and all, everything kind of lined up. So mm-hmm. you, it, you, you eliminate the guesswork, you eliminate the hours and hours of research that you're going to have to do to kind of figure out that, you know, those, those documents, figure out who you have to reach, figure out, you know, how you get insurance, how, you know, who you got to call and this happens. It's, it's all crazy. So that, that's the biggest thing for me. Awesome. Cool. Cool. Um, so you got these five machines now that's bringing you some passive income and you don't obviously have to be there to make that passive income. What does it feel like now having a successful ATM business? Like, like what kind of impact does it have on you? Um, I mean, it just gives you that comfort of, you know, just, you don't have to worry about, um, I mean, I, it's not really, a, you shouldn't have an ATM company if you worry about paying your bills, but, um, you should, that you should probably wait a little bit later. But what I, I guess what I mean is just having that extra money coming in, you know, and, and being able to put it away, whether I want to reinvest it into the ATM business and, or into my other business, I could do that or just kind of put it into, you know, if we'll get into stocks whatever you know what i mean there's just different options um 
So the, it's just there. You know, I, I see it every month. Like, oh, cool. You know, it's just like an extra, you know, extra money. You can't really complain with that. You know, It's you like know, you, have, you have other choices now if you want. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a good feeling. Yeah. You, know, you want to save up for vacation, you just save up all your ATM money for a couple months and take yourself a free vacation pretty much. You know what I mean? Um, but everyone has their own goals and, you know, things they want to do with this, but there's definitely options. You know, it's, it's cool. Do you think it's had any impact on your boys? Mm. Yeah, 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 definitely. So they're young, but they, they understand the concepts. And it's kind of cool for them to see, like, you know, that I don't really work for anybody. Even with my other business, they see that, you know, I'm kind of the one, the boss and, and you know, my own boss and, and things like that. Um, and then they help me. You know, I'll take them with me to go refill ATM or whatever. And whenever they see, you know, we walk through a store and they see an ATM. Daddy, look, ATM. So that's, that's pretty dope to see them kind of picking stuff up and doing it. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully later down the road it, it translates and, you know, they kind of want to do their own thing as well. So, and we actually named the company after them. So th nice. they'll be heavily involved into it later on when they get a little bit bigger. Love it. Love it. Um, so what do you think is the number one reason you've been so successful with my training program? Implementation is huge. You know, you just got to be an implementer. You know, you got to do it. Every, everything is right there. You just got to do it. Um, there's really no excuse. So, um, and that's, that goes for, you know, anything that you do, whether it's a job, whether it's, you know, course, school, college, you know, you gotta, you gotta do it. It's the guidelines yeah. in place for you, you just gotta do it. I agree. I was, so you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. This is true. This is true. I always tell folks, they always think, say knowledge is power. And I'm like, nah, knowledge followed by the implementation of that knowledge is power. Yeah, because Google's power, right? You can just go on Google and find anything. Right, right, right. If you don't implement, if you don't implement it, that don't mean nothing. Exactly. You practice, yeah. Exactly. But so, yeah, I that goes for like, anything. I feel like too, like uh, another reason you've been really successful. Of course, you implement, but I feel like military, like your military training, has you know something to do with that. I, I always find like students that are come from the military and go through my training, like they get shit done, man. Yeah, that's that's a big part of it too. Um, but I think, I think for me, like as a kid growing up, I was always somebody that that um, that didn't have a problem working hard and, and kind of doing things that they wanted to do. I just never really had the the guidance and and the how to when I was young. So that that when I got into the military and they kind of forced me, like, hey, no, you're gonna do this and you're gonna act this way. Things changed a lot. But um, it's funny you say that because. I went when I, I I tried college, so I tried college. Um, and when when I got out of high school, I tried college for like a semester, and I did okay. I did pretty well. And then the following semester, they were asking me. They were asking me to to um, what was it? Oh, I had to do like a public speaking class. And I was like, yeah, right. I'm not talking in front of nobody, so I ended up withdrawing from the class. And if you withdraw from the class, you only and we you know we had no money, so we were on financial aid, and you know. So you got to pay that, you got to pay them back if you just kind of drop out of class or you fail. So I was like, well, no, nah, you know, I'm going to join the military because if I join the military, I don't have to pay it back. So that was, and that wasn't the only reason, obviously, but that was a big part of it. Um, and I, I never really told, I don't really tell people that, hey, tell too many that story, but it's funny because then you go into the military and then when you make a little bit of rank, you know, you're going you're gonna to have to do a lot of public speaking and talking to a lot of people and groups of people. Um, so it kind of backfired on me, but it, it, it worked. <laughs> it worked out in the end. <laughs> and now you don't. And I just walked into it even more. <laughs> now you don't have any problems talking to people. You talk to the business owners all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and that's 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 big too. And you, you get kind of gave um you gave a lot of like tips and stuff on how to approach a business on the inside oh, yeah. of the So that helps a lot. Um, how to talk to them, what, you know, what points you want to, you want to discuss and, you know, how to bring value to them. So it's cool. It all works out. Awesome. So what do you think has been uh, your favorite part of your actual ATM business? Like what's your favorite thing with your ATM business so far? I think I know where you're um, going to say. What, what's that? I don't want to say it. I don't want to put it in your, in your head. I don't know. 
I, I don't know. Um, my favorite part, um, I, it's just the hustle, like the 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 goals, right? You know what I mean? Just just the progress. When you see, you know, when you see things kind of like happen, you're like, damn. Even though it was kind of hard, you know, oh, it sucks doing this, or it was hard doing this, but you get denied five or six times, and then that first yes, like, oh, yeah, you know, I got this. This is cool. All right. So it's it's more just the process and the grind, the hustle, the the um the success that comes with it, even the small success, you know, you celebrate the small goals, you know, it makes it easier to get to the big picture. Yeah. And you're right. Like you said, you hustle a lot in the beginning. You do a lot of work in the beginning, but then when you got it set up, it's like easy peasy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Just awesome. hop in the car, whatever, fill up, ATM, move out. Yeah. I mean, it's in and out. Exactly. I mean, it doesn't take long to fill an ATM machine, right? No. Nah. I mean, mm-hmm. two minutes and you're done. Do you have an extra cassette or you, you don't have an extra cassette? And you just fill the existing nah, cassette? Nah, what I do is I, I don't have an extra cassette. I just have it like, you know, um, I won't go too deep into my process because, uh, you know, I don't know who's watching and stuff. But, um, <laughs> no, nah, I mean, we, we're, we're, we're good. You know, we, we make sure we count before and then we just go in, go swap mm-hmm. out. That's how I do. You know, but it's pretty much the same process that you that you know you do. Gotcha. You talk about, um, but now nah, we don't have a we don't have another cassette. Okay. Um, and I do most of it. If I think it would, I I probably would. If um like if my wife was going, you know, doing, but she doesn't. It's rare that she'll fill up an ATM. I mean, if, and if she does, I'm usually with her. She's doing it real quick. But um, it's just so it just happens so quick. You know, I, yeah. I just go in. If I'm on my way to an appointment, I'll swing by the ATM, fill it up before I get to my appointment. You know, it's, it's easy. Yeah, it becomes like second nature when you keep doing it. It's just like you're fast. It's, you're in and out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. So, Victor, what would you say to someone who is on the fence and considering working with me to start their ATM business? Um, the first thing I would I would say is just, you know, you got to be smart about the decision you're making. It is an investment. And if you have that money, if you have the capital to, you know, to do it, then do it. I mean, there's no other reason why you don't, you shouldn't, you know, if you don't have the money, then you shouldn't be paying, trying to pay for a course with, uh, you know, your rent money or, you know, the money that's going to provide food mm-hmm. for your family. That's not the look. So um, then uh, I wouldn't recommend it in that case. But if you have that money laying around and saving you know, nowadays you ain't getting anything out of a savings account, so you might as well just take that money, reinvest it into something where you're gonna make a um, few extra hundred thousand or a hundred, um, well, we can get a thousand dollars a year off that money that you have in the savings account, pretty much. So, um, yeah, do it, man. It's, it's it's not that bad. It's easy. You just as long as you're not scared of hard work and, and you know being successful. You know, people are scared to be successful. They like to be comfortable, so don't be comfortable. That's my biggest thing. I like that. Don't be comfortable. I like that a lot. <laughs> Don't be comfortable. Um, so knowing what you know now, would you do it all over again? You know, get the training and get started in the ATM business and all that? Oh, yeah, I definitely would. I definitely would. And I, and for me, I, I, I would do it. I wish I had done it earlier. But for me, the timing was right. You know, if I did it earlier, you know, who knows? I, I probably wouldn't have it had all the money to be able to do it or, um, you know, I was in the military, so I, I was moving around a lot. You know, you can't really do it too much in there. But I think the time was right. But, yeah, I would do it all over again. Yep. Awesome, awesome. Well, I appreciate your time. Is there anything else that you would like to add to anybody that's watching now? No, nah, that's it. I mean, I love you, Carrie. <laughs> oh, I love you too, Victor. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time, and I don't want to take it away from your wifey anymore. <laughs> Yep, absolutely. She Thanks for having What did you say? I said she says hi. Oh, tell her I said hi and tell the boys I said hi when they when they wake up. Yeah, they wake up. Caden's got school tomorrow, so he'll be, you know. Oh, man, that stinks. Is he, well, is he excited for school or not excited for school? No, he likes it. He's in, oh. He started kindergarten, so. Good. Will you tell him I said to have a wonderful day? Yeah, I will. I will. All right. Well, thank you, Victor. I appreciate your time. Anytime, Carrie. You need me, let me know. I got you. All right. Thanks. You have a good one. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.